so I've worked with TuneTrack since I believe 2008 was when I did some work for the Metal Foundry, recorded some MIDI beats and fell in love with the software. I've been using it ever since. In the ensuing years after Metal Foundry, I actually did some more MIDI libraries of my own called Library of the Extreme and Metal Beats, a bunch of volumes of those. And uh, it was always my dream to sample my own drum kit. That's kind of my intention with this, is to really, during the recording, think of all those things, keep in mind how it's gonna translate to the e-drums when it's eventually used, so that it's gonna be the most loyal transcription in a way of how I actually play. So Chris Rakestraw is the producer on this project. I first worked with him probably eight or nine years ago on a recording here in LA and really enjoyed his personality and his work. Uh, he's an amazing producer and engineer. He also happened to work with Megadeth, not only in the studio, but also on the road. So he was an obvious choice to bring in here since he's also a fan of the TuneTrack software on top of that. I've been friends with Dirk for a good long while and I think we've probably been talking with TuneTrack for like four or five years about doing a sample pack. So when it finally came time to do this, it was extremely important to get it right because there's been like years of buildup of conversation. Having zero noise floor was a massive thing for me. I didn't want to hear a single scratch, a single 60 cycle hum, nothing like that. So this had to be pristine audio the whole way. Here is just complete focus. We got to tune snares, change head, there was no rush. It was literally like, you want to work on a snare for two hours? Go ahead, no one's going to give you a hard time. And I think that's probably what attributes the most positive tone change on all of this stuff. It's just being able to ring out every single drum, ring out every tom head, ring out every snare shell that you want to try. That was the biggest difference. The intention of making this pack for me, it's putting my own stamp on it, kind of like I did with the libraries of the Extreme when I realized how superior drummer and easy drummer work. I was like, I can contribute some of my own flavor to this by kind of organizing it in a way that makes sense to me. And this is similar in a sense with the sounds. So a lot of these sounds are designed to work for the fast blast beats or the heavy rock things. If you do drum sounds that are too wide and open, they're never gonna fit into a blast beat. They're never gonna fit into like 180 BPM, 16 notes. And so I think that's important in the process to be aware of that. You know, now that this software has been around for so many years, there's a good view of what it's gonna be in the end. All the way from the selection of the drums to the tuning, to the way I treat all the miking, it's all with the idea of how does this fit up against guitars in a heavy rock environment. We were very lucky to find the studio one-on-one, -on -one, which was famous for a lot of really big records in the 80s and 90s, most notably, for example, Megadeth, Rest in Peace. Thankfully, Dirk was able to find the studio that had such a significance in the history of like, you know, great metal and rock records that I grew up listening to in the 90s. The studio was not available for many years because it became private. I didn't think it was still around, and then I kind of by chance found out that it's open again under new ownership and that it has been completely renovated. So that was the perfect occasion and exactly what we had been looking for to complete this project. So this room has 
amazing amounts of history. <laughs> Too much to mention. So many cool albums have been made here and, and you know, when you take the sound here, you will know why. I mean, drums just sound ridiculous in here. You walk in, set up two mics, you're like, that's exactly what we heard on millions of records <laughs> through my whole childhood. So I think that's the biggest thing for me. My approach on recording drums is just a result of 25 years of doing it over and over and over. I basically change about one thing every drum session to weed out, you know, you have a control group and then maybe one session you find a better mic and a better mic and a better mic. You multiply that times 25 years and you get a pretty solid set of mics and techniques that are fundamentally sound. So when I walk in a room like this famous room that we're in right now, I just apply my fundamentals to the room and it turns out really good. The first drum kit I thought about sampling is obviously the one I use in my current band, Megadeth. It's a maple kit, which is kind of the classic metal configuration, if you will. Then we have a birch bubinga, which I've used in many years before then, and also in the studio. I played it with Soil Work on tour. And then we have also a walnut kit, which is yet a different vibe and a different feel. So really we're covering the whole spectrum. We really uh, adhere to like the, the metal staples of the industry to have those in the pack, because you gotta have those if you want it to be a useful pack. And once we had those done, then we kind of went outside the box. If something wasn't amazing, we chucked it. I don't like to do too much processing on the way in, because every time you change an EQ or uh, add another compressor on this mic or that, you end up changing the phase a little bit on everything. And as soon as you start fiddling with phase, everything starts kind of falling apart. If I have to limit myself to, does the drum sound good, yes or no? Does the player sound good, yes or no? Is the tuning right, yes or no? After we find out the source is good, then you have to pick the correct mic. I'm not gonna put some muddy mic on a kick drum when I know I'm gonna be playing 180 BPM. The less stuff you do during a drum session, the better. Well, when I first heard the outcome of this recording, my mind was just completely blown. You know, it's, it's up to the standard of what Tuntrack has been doing for many years, which is absolute perfection. You know, they've reached a level with this stuff that's, it's hard to explain. You know, you have to sit down and actually use it, and then you will understand how realistic it is and how much you can actually make a very different instrument, an electronic kit, which feels very different from an acoustic kit, feel very much the same because the sound work is that great. Did I expect it to sound so good? Yes, it's tune track. It's hands down the best sampler on the, on the market. There's a reason I've been using this stuff since before 2010. There's a reason I'm gonna keep using it for the rest of my career. When I finally got to hear my sounds coming out of a plug-in, that's exactly what I heard at the session. It was that drummer in that room with that set of gear, that set of drums, perfect. I couldn't believe it so perfect. I'm sure that having my own kits now in the software is gonna be incredible feeling, you know. Just it's gonna have that extra level of familiarity for me with the sound and the way I use the different elements. So I really look forward to using it in my studio.